Okay. Can you guys share what prayer looked like? Because sometimes oh, you guys yeah. weren't together. Yeah, so when we were doing, when we were together, we spent some time praying and then we ended up making that like an everyday mm -hmm. occurrence when you were first in Maine. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just, there would be somebody else like in the room, but it was just the two of us praying together. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it wasn't like alone. But it was yeah. a specific time. Even when we did Bible, even when we did Bible together, it was still with someone else in the room. But and the other person, like Mark or Sarah, could have added to it. But then we were doing it in the presence of someone else. So. Mm -hmm. And then after you left, it was no longer an everyday thing. But we would call. How many times a week? A couple times a, couple, a couple week. Couple times yeah. a week. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Two, three times. So we would talk on the phone and we would just put it on speaker. Um, I would like sit in mommy and daddy's room and put the phone on speaker. And so mm -hmm. we would talk. Um, and then we would do prayer time at the end that he would pray and then I would pray. And that's how we would kind of mm -hmm. end our calls. Yeah. And I think one way we did it too was ask each other, how can I be praying for you? Mm -hmm. And that sort of thing. So then you have an intentional thing to be praying for one another about until the next time or something. Yeah. And then once we came back to Tennessee, it was just different times. It'd be like, hey, can we go pray together before you leave? That sort mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wayland also prays with us as a family. Yeah. A we do. <laughs> yeah. We do prayer time every night. So Sorry, when he's here, the tripod is sitting on mommy's chair. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, we do prayer time together a lot just as a family mm -hmm. and that's everybody mm -hmm. goes up through like yep so we start with malachi and it goes up to <laughs> sorry. sorry i'm not so. trying to ruin your camera it's okay i was trying to move because i have a cramp in my leg <laughs> that's okay do you need that something you're good no. okay. you're good well. um mm -hmm. so yeah that's malachi to daddy everybody prays for those who don't know malachi's three gideon doesn't, doesn't talk <laughs> So he, he doesn't you get can, to work. You can't it. <laughs> oh, true. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what question are we on now? Um, advice from you to other young people looking to be married or in some sort of relationship. Boy, boy. <laughs> you um, said we like to counsel people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. Um, I'm trying to think of what specific advice. So I would give, for me personally, something that I wish I would have done more was... You're never going to be completely prepared for marriage or a courtship relationship, but preparing yourself ahead of time. If you desire courtship or if you desire marriage, start now and prepare yourself spiritually and physically for that. That's, like I said before, going to other people for counsel, diving into the Word of God to figure out what is a godly, not just looking about what does a godly young woman look like, what does a godly young man look like? What does a husband look like? What are the roles that he's called to do? Mm -hmm. Like, that's the biggest piece of advice I'd give her anyone who's a young man or young woman. Um, is start preparing yourself now. You're never going to be completely prepared because... But we do see... The Lord gives us principles in the, in the Word that shows us what we're called to do as Christians and how we're to live our lives out as married people. So I would say start preparing yourself now for that. Mm -hmm. I would say to sisters in Christ, looking for somebody who is willing to lead you spiritually and is able to lead you spiritually mm -hmm. um, is a big one. And also somebody who is willing and able to carry out the roles of a husband and not letting your heart be attached to somebody who's not able to do those things being very intentional in the first place, um, looking to others' counsel. And then what was the other thing I was thinking of? I hate um, it when I can't remember what I was talking about. I don't know. Okay, if you had anything else. Uh, I, I have, might get yeah, back I'd to have it. one more. Um, and it just left me. <laughs> <laughs> you may forget. Oh, now you're waiting um, on me. Um, what was it? Oh, I was oh, supposed to say it. Okay, I just remembered. It was the advice that people had given me. Was people said I just remember now too. <laughs> is this somebody that you're going to be able to submit to? That was mm. one of the things that people were telling me. This is what you need to be thinking about is can you submit to this man every day of your life? Mm -hmm. And if you are not able to submit to somebody, then you shouldn't be considering whether to become their wife or not. Mm hmm That's a good one. I would say the other piece of advice would be trusting in the lord for his timing um mm -hmm. be if you desire marriage prepare if you desire marriage prepare yourself 
but also serve be serving the lord while you are single because you're mm -hmm. not going to be single if you desire marriage and you're praying about it and asking the lord for that he will give that to you if it's his will so while you are single serve the lord while you're single serve like faithfully you have more opportunities than someone who is married now a married person isn't less faithful or anything like that they serve the lord in other ways mm -hmm. but serve the lord while you're single whether that be your street ministry counseling helping other people like sir lord and trust that he will bring a spouse to you or he'll guide you to a spouse um but don't kind of feel like that's never going to happen like trust the lord and trust that his promises will come true when he says that he will give us that if we pray and ask him like he will give those things to us and marriage is something that god has created for christians and so he will give that to you if you desire that um but sir lord I think, that time. Oh, sorry. Nope. I think also not idolizing marriage is one mm -hmm. thing that I was encouraged because I wrote to some older women. I'm like, okay, so what should I be doing in this season of life that I'm single, but want to be married? This was before we were recording. Um, and this one sister just told me, don't idolize it. Don't feel like, okay, all I'm doing is sitting around waiting for a husband to come and get me. <laughs> it's like, no, be serving God during this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's one thing. Okay, well, you get the next question. Yep. Waylon, what qualities in Virginia do you see that you desire in a wife? I actually wrote these ones down. I think oh, I wrote, okay. But I don't have my notebook with me. He, he um, wrote the answer, not the question. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I wrote the answers. Um, qualities that I've seen in Virginia that I desire in a wife, I think would be, first one is just loving the Lord and a desire to look into the word. There were things that we talked about when we first started recording that doctrinal things that you can definitely tell like, okay, she's not just going along with what the culture says or the mainstream church says or anything like this. This is like, she's studied these things out and knows them from the scriptures and she's not just going to let it slide, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like she's done, she's done, done the work in this. So that shows me several <laughs> yeah. things in that she's, a hard worker in studying she's diligent in her studying she desires to be pleasing to the lord in those things um so that'd be the first one what'd you say <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing um second one is just a love for ministry um i don't know what the lord's going to call us to after you know the wedding and the honeymoon and just work wise and everything but like a love for reaching out and ministering to other people and so that's one thing i desire in a wife um also just a love to serve and to not only serve like her family but to serve the church and so i think that is a good point too a love to serve your family even as a young man you should have that desire to serve your family because although you may not be it may not be your family as you're the head of the household yet but how you serve your family now being single is a lot like how you serve your family when you get older, in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have no desire to be in serving your family or anything like that, who's to say you're going to desire serving your family when you're married? You know, because you're going to have a lot more responsibility and a lot more things to be, have to do. So that was one of the qualities that I desired to see, and I've seen very much in Virginia. Um, boy, there's so many. <laughs> What's the other one? <laughs> Well, the next question was, what qualities do I see in you that I'm looking for in a husband? One would be loving the Lord in his word and a desire for ministry. Um, and then also how you respond to hard times. Because there have been mm. several hard times throughout our courtship. Yeah, it's been um, challenging. <laughs> and just seeing like... I'm like, oh, he's going through a hard time. I want to be there to encourage him. And then you end up encouraging me mm -hmm. in pointing to the faithfulness of God and mm -hmm. how you respond in prayer and all of those things mm -hmm. has really been something that I've seen and come to appreciate more in, I don't know that I would have told you, like if somebody asked me ahead of time, oh, what quality are you looking for? But as I've seen it played out in your life, mm -hmm. I've come to appreciate that more and more. Mm -hmm. um, also, your love for kids. Because mm. a lot of Young men in our culture don't like kids. <laughs> yeah. The or at least don't show it. off Waylon in all of our pictures is Abigail or Samuel or Uriah <laughs> or 
or Gideon, or Gideon, or, or Gideon goes through withdrawals if Waylon's gone for like 48 <laughs> hours. One time Waylon left and he came and sat in Waylon's spot and pouted. And then if Waylon shows up after being gone for like two days, Gideon just sits there and hugs him. Mm -hmm. It's adorable. Yes. <laughs> I like them. Um, so that was some, but also. I know another being, thing that stood out. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That we talked about. That we Virginia talked. and I and Mark talked about was just when some things came up where Virginia's feelings were hurt. Not by him. Not by him. No, no. <laughs> by other people. By other people. Just misunderstandings and things like that. Just mm -hmm. the way that Wayland was willing to consider her feelings, even if he didn't, like, I remember in one of the times he's like, I don't really understand why that bothered you, but it did bother you, and I want to fix the situation. But mm -hmm. just being understanding of girls and their emotions. Mm -hmm. Because we know that as a culture sometimes guys kind of just are against like i don't know i don't get why you're crying just stop yeah just stop <laughs> and mm -hmm. emotions are very real mm -hmm. in the same way that you virginia have to learn how to deal with his emotional side which is going to look right. different than your emotional yeah. side but just the way that wayland tried to fix those situations like even mm -hmm. if you couldn't fix them yeah. Acknowledging that she was hurt, even if he didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Both. What do you look forward to most in your marriage? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of things. <laughs> yeah. um, I think... I look forward to a lot of things. Like, I'm excited about the, the wedding and the honeymoon. But I'm excited to get back from all those things and just start life together. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Just like... To be able to, I don't know, it, it almost is a dream. Mm -hmm. Like, until the wedding day, I don't think it's like reality is going to hit hard, probably. Yeah. Which is going to be good. I'm, I like that. <laughs> um, but I'm just like, the other day we were talking about things. And it's just like, like scheduling. What will life look like after, you know, what will we, what do we, do we want to get up early? Do we want to get up late? And it's just like, I don't know. You know, it's just like, <laughs> it's those things you've thought of your entire life. And you're like, it's actually happening. It's coming true. And we're bringing those things to life now, you know? So mm -hmm. I think for me, it's like just looking forward to, I'm looking forward to working and coming home <laughs> to yeah. Virginia. And I'm looking forward to just having children one day. Um, I'm looking forward to ministry together, mm -hmm. you know, for especially the first couple of years. Yeah. So I don't know. What do you look most forward to? I think just to like sum it up, is I feel like throughout this whole time, we've become best friends. Mm -hmm. And so just being able to live life together. together. Yeah. Yeah. It, and I am really looking forward to ministry and all the different things that we're going to be doing together. Um, just in, we enjoy one another's company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And having those conversations and all of those different things. Yeah. What do you look forward to most? I don't know about most. I don't know. It all is just, I'm looking forward to it every, all of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So. Okay, so mommy and daddy get the last question. So we're going to have uh -oh. to. Are you guys okay with the camera? Okay, camera's not going there. Okay, camera's going to mommy. Okay, okay. okay. I'm answering the question by myself, Oops. I guess. <laughs> Would you change anything in your next daughter's potential on, courtship? The lighting. Yes. Lighting? Okay, wait. Oh. Technical. Hold on, I, I'll come over here. I can come, come out from here? under. Oh. Okay. okay, camera. Camera angle craziness. Okay, sorry for tuning in. We're gonna sit on top of you. Okay, I'm trying not to sit on top you of the sleeping baby. Well, that's hey. not all bad. <laughs> you okay. So I'm just gonna do this. Okay. So what would we change in another daughter's like future courtship? Um, we'd pick another guy because he's taken. <laughs> and no, I don't thanks. know. <laughs> I don't know who that guy's gonna be because we didn't plan when we started spending time with Wayland for him to be courting Virginia. So none of it was like fabricated. <laughs> like, like we weren't like, Ooh, I hope we're on Waylon's good graces. So he'll come along and marry one of our daughters. Cause we know families who specifically try to spend time with other families to try to find a spouse for their child. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's wrong. Like if your family and another family get along and you have children of similar age, 
I'm not saying that that's wrong at all, but trying to fabricate it as parents isn't um, necessarily letting God's leading happen. Like the whole time we had Wayland with us, even after he had asked to court the first time, we still weren't sure that he was the guy to court. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, no, it just, it, it wasn't like, okay, so you're planning to come back in a year and then we'll let courtship start. Like there were things about Wayland. <laughs> I'm totally blaming this one on you. Facebook, Facebook ads. ads. <laughs> there are, um, there shot. are things about Wayland and he, we've told him this, there were things about him the first time that he came to approach us that we were like, we don't know if he's the one for Virginia. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a, well, hopefully we get to know him over this year and then maybe he'll be the one. Mm -hmm. But we learned a lot about him during that year, which helped show us that he was the one to be courting. So what would we change about another? I don't think we're going to have as strong of a relationship with the man who comes to court, Naomi. But it's at, possible. We right. don't think we'd have this three years. Do they still have rent a brother programs? Because that's how we got this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kind of became big brother for a year before the courtship started. Mm -hmm. And now all the kids don't understand why. <laughs> that, so the littles haven't quite figured out that when we leave Tennessee, Virginia and Waylon aren't just coming to Maine and staying with us forever. <laughs> I think they're going to be very disappointed because um, they think Waylon just now lives with our family. Um, actually, we used you this morning during Bible study because we were talking about, we were in um, Ephesians and it was talking about the inheritance that has now been given to the Gentiles. And so we were talking about how like we're a family, but now you're like part of the family. So you get to come raid the brownie dish while we're gone. <laughs> The other day yeah. he was working and he came and raided the brownie dish hey, and he had given permission. He had been given permission. Um, so, but at Naomi's age now, when Virginia was 16, we didn't know Wayland yet, or we were just about to meet Wayland. Hmm. So like, we don't know if we've met her future quarter. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I know a few guys that are not on the list. <laughs> oh yeah. We talk about guys that are not on the list often. <laughs> it makes it easier when everybody knows that they're not on the list. So then you can have some a name to put to examples when you're trying to talk about courtship and stuff and everybody knows this isn't happening and it's not like starting feelings. So right? for a while mm -hmm. we, we really jokingly no. no 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 for a while Joe? we jokingly called him Joe Schmo oh, from Montana. That one. That one. Okay. Joe Schmo from Montana. Well, wait, did you guys know story? he likes the court when you called him Joe Schmo? <laughs> Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> and he was from Montana. He lived in Montana at one time. Not really from Montana, but um, it was close enough. So I don't think we would necessarily change anything we did in the relationship. It there were specific reasons that their engagement was the length of time that it was, mm -hmm. like why it started when it started and why it ended, like became engagement when it did, um, which wouldn't necessarily be the same timeline. Um, for these guys, an eight month engagement was kind of what was needed. Courtship. Courtship. Sorry. <laughs> eight month courtship. Eight month engagement. <laughs> no. Didn't I tell you you made the wedding? <laughs> no, don't dress. Um, so the eight month courtship was needed for certain things that were going on. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was a lot of personal growth and patience and everything that God was working through these guys during that time. I don't think you necessarily need an eight month courtship, depending on the person. It could be shorter. You might have a two year courtship. <laughs> I don't think you need to have a super long courtship. You need to know the person. But in our case, we were able to come to Tennessee. So we got to spend a lot of time with him. This courtship would have looked a lot different if it was long distance the whole time. Mm -hmm. Would have been not nearly as fun. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. And we had the opportunity to know his family which, and you've been part of this church the last six months, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been part of the church that we're now leaving Virginia in. Yeah. Um, and we got to know Waylon's family, which actually really helped us with... <laughs> Naomi's going to miss leaving Waylon's family because <laughs> she's made really good friends with his sisters and stuff. So, um, And they all like to go they work on the animal Charlie chores too. and everything. And they have... Oh, she has her yeah, triplets. As so. long as Gideon had Charlie, he wouldn't really care about Waylon. <laughs> yeah. 
Except for Charlie lives in Tennessee too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, what was I going to say? Oh, we, because we were able to meet your family, mm -hmm. we actually were able to have a lot of conversations that were very targeted mm -hmm. of how, like every family is different. Like when Mark and I got married, Mark's mom, Mark, if you're, if you're watching hold, this mom, hold on, hi. Hold that thought for just a second. I just realized you're like laying across <laughs> Virginia. Here. Well, if I move my arm, I'm going to fall over. So I <laughs> do either way. Actually, okay. Do you want her to put her <laughs> knee up to support me? Sorry, I just realized it. So my mother. Anyway. Okay. So <laughs> not saying anything bad about you, Mammy, because I know you're going to watch this. Mark's mom was very much a clean person. And for some years, Mark was homeschooled. For some, he went to private or like Christian or public school. So his family dynamic looked different and mom was able to keep a house clean. My mom, hey mom, if you're watching this video, my mom worked full time and my house was the place where everyone came to hang out. So there were always messy people in my house. <laughs> the and house my, was clean. It was just cluttered. It was very cluttered. Everybody else's mess until grandma got to go clean up their mess along yeah. with the mess that these guys made. So the house wasn't dirty. But we were cluttered. My dad would read the newspaper in the morning and then his newspaper would sit out until we ate dinner together at the table at night, which I loved eating dinner together as a family. That was something my family did. It was something mm -hmm. Mark's family didn't do. And mm -hmm. so there were just things of family culture that are done very differently, even if families look the same. Like we have friends that people... <laughs> Well, we, their two families have like the same number of kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dress so. and act and live a lot of the same way mm -hmm. and go to very similar churches. And, and our families are very different. There's so. three girls in both families, and you guys get seven boys. We, <laughs> we're still trying to figure one out. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're, the one they're, they're the not womb. old enough yet. They're not old enough yet. They're still only like what, eight, eight weeks. Yeah. Eight, eight weeks gestation. Eight weeks. So we can't tell yet. So we'll see if we get seven boys, three girls to keep it the same. Um, we've both lived in a camper, but I've never lived in the back of a tractor trailer. <laughs> yeah. My family lived in a, uh, a semi for some time. Yeah. <laughs> growing up. So just, we both traveled yeah. all over the country, both mm -hmm. our families. Mm -hmm. Our families look, oh, so like one thing his family does, um, they were, his dad was raised Mennonite. So his mom made dessert after every lunch and supper and mm -hmm. we don't eat dessert very often. So mm -hmm. it's little things like that, but like. When I was saying about Mark's mom with it always being clean and my family cluttered, that was something we had to deal with when we first mm -hmm. got married because I didn't see clutter. Like there could yeah. be a stack of paper sitting on the counter and it could sit there for three days and I wouldn't notice. And Mark's like, why is the stack of paper? Here? <laughs> and I truly wouldn't see it because in my mind, that was just how the house looked. Um, so just different things like that. We were able to, through spending time with your family and you spending time with us and just seeing we did things differently mm -hmm. we were able to have conversations and they were able to have conversations mm -hmm. about why does this work or not work in our families is yes. this something you want to continue in the future is this mm -hmm. something i mean because you guys are making your own family yeah. that's going to look different from either of the families mm -hmm. we don't want you to copy us just because we're superior um <laughs> well we are <laughs> dessert after every meal like we go to his parents house mm -hmm. and we have dessert every time that we have lunch mm -hmm. yep. and then and my kids think it's supper. the greatest thing <laughs> and they love miss dawn because she thing. makes dessert all the she time and iced tea. Well. oh and iced tea, and iced tea. Wava makes them iced tea and they think that's a great treat too. so it's just something that came up because we spent this time together but it could be a very big struggle like you don't need dessert after every meal like i think we've talked about this but mm -hmm. like if you want a dessert after every meal and I'm like, no, you eat dessert once a week <laughs> and then I'm not meeting your expectations that mm -hmm. it could lead to problems down the road, just even over a little thing. Mm -hmm. But we were able to, that Figure came that up out. because of that time. Together. And like one of the things they were able to talk about the other night, um, something that I've stressed to friends over time is as a wife, find out what your husband really wants. Mm -hmm. Because when Mark and I first got married, and he was working, I didn't realize that he really wanted the floor to be cleaned up when he got home. Like no toys on the floor. Not like super vigilant about that. Well, okay, sometimes I, I super, was vigilant. super vigilant. <laughs> but, yeah. but like he wanted the floor to be clean, but he didn't care if I even had a dinner plan where other men might come home and, you know, sniff the air and be like, where's my dinner? Why isn't dinner cooking? Mm. And so I knew, I knew that I wanted a certain 
amount of stuff done before he got home. But we all have those days that, oh no, daddy's going to be home in 10 minutes. What do we focus on? And our thing was to focus on getting the floor clean. Mm -hmm. So they were able to sit down and she was able to like ask him what things, you know, matter to you if my day is shortened. And some of that is just going to be things that have to be figured out because, you know, the day that you have kids that are sick and whining and crying, maybe mm -hmm. the only thing you can do is get the floor clean before daddy gets home. <laughs> because God has called that day a day of discipline and caring for children instead of, you know, and loving on the children instead of cleaning the house and making mm -hmm. the perfect meals. Yeah. And like, is he satisfied with, hey, honey, can you pick up pizza on the way home? Or would he rather have, you know, tater tots and chicken nuggets is his easy meal, you know? Talk about those things. <laughs> tater tots. Tater tots are good. <laughs> Mark, like finally, potatoes. something they agree on. I like potatoes. Mark misses tater tots because we can't make them in the camper. Mm -hmm. Not enough room for all of the tater tot needs. Mm -hmm. yep. So. Yep. I don't usually make my tater tots spicy. No. I don't know. I've never had your tater, your tater tots. Because <laughs> we can't make them in the camper. Nah. So um, most of what I would say would change would be based on the person mm -hmm. that Naomi that comes to court Naomi I, I think we would still do the exact same of the man should approach Mark first and ask mm -hmm. if he can court her and then Mark would go to Naomi and say hey is there any interest here and then Mark would go back to the man to say either yes or no um I will be the bad guy Mark gets to be the bad guy for the girls not um allowing their no to hurt a friendship because we're assuming that who's ever coming to court is somebody that we want to continue to have as a family friend. Mm -hmm. So we don't want that person's feelings hurt by the daughter. We'd rather daddy just says, no, this isn't a good match or this I isn't right now. I don't mind being the big fat <laughs> um, <laughs> I am capable. And I think that we would continue the same. Like, I think the rules that you guys set that we agreed to of boundaries and all of that worked really well mm -hmm. and that you guys appreciated them mm -hmm. and that it was easy to continue those boundaries there wasn't a lot of um like okay this is okay in this situation but not this situation mm -hmm. i guess mm -hmm. so like the only like touch that they had was giving hugs like greeting and leaving which they do to other people um but there wasn't like well, you can kiss each other goodnight, but you can't kiss each other hello. Like, uh, like there was we just... Didn't have to make those. We didn't have to make those rules. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Are there things daddy you would change? Daddy seems to be thinking. Yeah, yeah daddy yeah, seems to be thinking really sure hard. And I don't but I don't want to say it on a recording. Oh. <laughs> okay, y'all. See y'all. Exactly. Let's talk about her. You little cast. The boy got. What were you thinking? <laughs> Anyway, um, so I think we would keep those things the same. I'm going to try to lean this way and not lean on you, but I don't want to fall over. Okay. Out of the shot. okay. Um, so then, um, yeah. And so I think I, I, the you two timing, the, the, okay. um, the timing <laughs> of the courtship and the engagement would not necessarily be the same. That isn't, that is not a written in stone for us. If the right guy came along in the right circumstances, it could be a shorter courtship. But not now she's 16. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If, if you want to approach Mark and ask if in the future you might have a chance, you could do that. But now's not the time. Y'all have any ideas. College students think she's 20-something. <laughs> For us, a courtship is not going to begin until both parties are ready for marriage. <laughs> His mm. phone's going off. Um, until both parties are ready for marriage. So when these two started courting, we felt they were both maturity-wise ready to get married mm -hmm. um naomi's only 16 so she's not there yet and there's no point of someone who is not mature enough to marry to start a relationship involving marriage mm -hmm. if they're not going to get married because that's the point of courtship is to see if you're going to marry the person mm -hmm. yeah. so so that's but we let you hang around for like a year yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> you even got to go to florida I did. He got free vacations. I did. <laughs> <laughs> he got a couple of free vacations. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we didn't ask him to pay for anything. <laughs> we don't go to Disney, but we do have lots of fun. Though. We did high tech, okay? We did high tech. We did Adam's Road. We did Adam's, Adam's Road. Road. Adam's Road. Adam's Road. Mm -hmm. We got to see Christina. Mm -hmm. Tarpon Springs. 
And the sponge oh, town. Yeah. That was kind of cool. Florida. <laughs> yep. The big fort. Hmm. Uh, DeSoto. DeSoto. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what fort, fort did you go to? <laughs> yeah, Fort DeSoto. Singing, and... singing in the fort with Brian and We did company. the river walk with Mom and Holly. Yeah. Because they went down. Mm-hmm. And Christina. Oh, and Christina. Mm-hmm. That's right. Christina went with what us. What else did we do? We did. We stayed, at the, we stayed at the cool trees in Pace. Yeah. Uh, and did the horse. He climbed a tree and I thought he was going to fall down. <laughs> My first time Virginia ride a horse. I mm-hmm. had actually been on a horse before that. Oh. Uh, when she was like four or something. We also got to see. Audrey's horse, on actually. It. I, I texted Audrey today. Oh, it was yeah? actually Audrey's horse. We also got to see Wayland and how he dealt with um, children. Because <laughs> we've told you he loves our children and it's easy. It's easy to love our children because they're just so perfect. After eight <laughs> Until hours eight hours in the car and they're screaming for the mm. last half hour. Oh, he's seen them throw up. He's <laughs> seen them sick. He's seen them. Yeah, when he got <laughs> in the car, <laughs> when he got in the car to go on the three week vacation to Florida, I remember saying to him, <laughs> The kids have this little cough. By the time we got to Florida, <laughs> it's not that far to Florida from here, y'all. No, and they we're, were. In we had to go the next morning and get cough medicine, which we don't do as a family. But I had to go in the store and find cough medicine, and Uriah was miserable. And the bus door opener, we didn't work. <laughs> yeah, the bus. So you guys tried to we fix it a couple it. times, and then you had to sleep in the bus. Which, did yep. you ever get a fan to go, or did you just sleep without a fan? Oh, it was hot. Uh, did no, I didn't use a fan. Yeah, you didn't use. Them. I don't think so. Got got oh, and then we did. Um, I introduced you to my deaf friends that you couldn't talk to. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, tried to, the dark I tried to have Virginia explain my testimony to a deaf person. And then she had to go do something else, so she left me and Waylon talking to deaf people. We do not speak sign language. <laughs> at church, nobody yeah. speaks sign language. <laughs> you sign sign language. Um, so that was fun. That was fun. And then we went to Priest Mill, and had friends come join us in the camper. In the rain. So, oh, we made him. We did an interview, but we didn't let him say anything. We stuck him in a corner. He told me to be quiet. Yep, I got to watch oh, my first interview. So, all that was before the courtship. That was all before the courtship. <laughs> we had all the fun before the courtship. Yeah, when you locked us out of the camper. Oh, with, like yeah. The... What? <laughs> when you didn't lock us out of the camper, so but this... we showed up at the camper. We'd gone to take showers, and we showed up at the camper, and we were locked out. So he said he locked us out. Yeah. He said you didn't, but whatever. <laughs> I don't remember this. So when he came to me, we tried to get him to pick up dead crabs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I, we were looking for crabs, and I found a bigger crab. And so I'm like, oh, look, Leland, come pick it up. And it was dead. It was dead. <laughs> Oops. But we went from starfish. We found yes. starfish, yep. Yeah. We walked a lot of beaches. Mm-hmm. That was after the courtship. Like, after we started. Yes, going. that it was. was. starfish. Most Not the dead of, crab. Okay, most of the after courtship has been here. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very little's been in Maine. We've been up on top of mountains. Two weeks. We're in Maine. Mm-hmm. Two weeks mm-hmm. we're in Maine. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah. So there's been a lot that's happened in this courtship. And so, yeah, there's certain things we would keep the same, but whoever the next guy is, is going to, everything's going to be different about him. We'll learn along with us because we still, this is one shot and we, I think we did okay, mm-hmm. but we're definitely still learning. So we had good ones to try with. <laughs> next time we have one good party to try with, but we don't know who the other party is yet. So. <laughs> Could make it hard. Then, prepared, depending on his family, could be even more difficult. If you're not prepared to be grilled, don't even call. <laughs> yes. So, are do you having have, a phone number? For anyone who's looking, <laughs> go put it on for a courtship <laughs> video instruction. Like, they have one, and that's how I learned a lot. Actually, <laughs> I don't remember when it when y'all recorded that. No, I don't remember. My mom over kept, a year ago or something like that. My mom kept asking, "Does Waylon know what he's supposed to do? Like, maybe you just need to direct him that he needs to ask Mark." I already knew that. <laughs> she oh, didn't, told him all right. She didn't know that Mark had already said not yet to mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. So. Yeah, I think that's all the questions. Yay! So if that anyone, was the last question. Yeah. If anyone has more questions, we can do another video. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or uh, we could answer all the negative comments, but we're an hour and 13 minutes in. We could probably Whoa. <laughs> How did we That's do that? <laughs> and some people have to go to bed tonight because it's 8.41. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Okay. So. <laughs> well, we will see you all next time on Hurting Little Cows to the Glory of God. Bye. Bye.